Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. Today, I want to show you how to model a beautiful heart in FreeCAD for your loved one. So come join me by the computer and don't forget your drink. All right, guys, let's start by creating new right here. And first thing is, let's go into the image workbench. Once we're there, click this button here, create planar image in 3D space and select a heart. Uh, so I found this one online through Google Images and just open it up. Asks you which plane, you know what, we want it on the top plane. And you can tell it's the top plane because the picture changes as you click on it. Click OK. And there's my heart. Beautiful. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And now the first thing you want to do is make sure you resize this. Click on this image plane right here. Then click on the scale image. Now it's going to ask you, okay, what distance do you want? And I want to go 100. Just for example, you can scale to whatever size you want. And it says select first point. So I'm going to go from here. And now my second point is going to be right here. I'm going to click OK. And it says select image plane. So I can just click on the heart. Click OK. And now if I go back into here, we should be scaled at 100 millimeters. So there you go, 98. If I clicked a little higher, I would have gotten 100. I'm going to delete this distance here since I don't need it anymore. And now I want to go into our part design workbench. That's the one we like. That's where we play most often. So create new body, create new sketch. And of course, I want it on that same plane as the heart and click OK. You'll notice that FreeCAD always centers images to the mid plane. So when you do look for a picture, make sure it's nicely centered. So now that I've gone here, the first thing I want to do is make a line. So I'm going to click line and I'll zoom in just a bit. And I want to make my line where this dimple, I guess you can call it, begins. So I'll click right here. And I want it to end at the tail end here. So I'm just going to click right here. And now that I have my line, I'm going to click on the line. Selecting it through here is a little bit easier. And I'm just going to do one of these block constraints. I don't want it to move in any direction. I'm happy where it is. In this scenario, I'm not as worried about dimensions as aesthetics. So next, let's go create B spline right here. And I want to attach it to here. So make sure I have the icon coming up there, which is this guy right here. You'll see it right to the right of my cursor and it's right there. And now what I want to do is every little while I just want to click. So I'm kind of following tracing this along and this is going to be the contour that uh, I take. And you know what? And whenever I work with beast lines, I like to put more rather than less because these are hard to add later on. And the more you add, the, the better the curves. So then at the end, I want to make sure I've snapped to the end point of that line. So I'm looking for that coincidental constraint and I'm going to click OK or just click. Now that I'm here, I want to end this. So you just simply right click and you'll see this generated right here. If you wanted to define some of these curves, make them a little bit better. You can now click on the center point right here and you can move these guys around. And as you move these around, you'll see that this shape changes. And you know what? Be as precise as you want. You can move them left, right, up, down, whichever one you want until you are happy with your heart. Now, if your heart is symmetric like this one, we could leave it here because we're just going to mirror one side to the other side. If your heart, however, is asymmetrical, all you'll have to do is click on this line right here and then click this button up here. This will change it from a normal line to a reference. So it'll become blue. Then afterwards, you'll just select your spline and work around again, tracing it out until you get to the end point and then right click to finish. And that will get you your completed heart. I'm just going to undo it because I'm going to use the mirror method because mine's symmetrical. So now that we have half the heart drawn, let's go over here and let's hide the heart image itself just to get it out of our way. So next step, 
click on sketch and let's pad this out and we can pick whatever we want. I'm just gonna go for 20. Next, click on the pad and up here on mirror object and you'll get this guy snapping in right there. Click OK. And now here's one thing. If you wanna do a little bit of processing on this guy right now, because he's split into two sides, you might have a little bit of a problem. I've seen FreeCAD crash when I tried to add a chamfer or a fillet, but we can fix that. So click on mirrored and change your refine to true, click offs, and there you go. When that middle line goes away, it's refined it into one solid object. So now if you apply a chamfer or a fillet, it shouldn't crash FreeCAD. But just in case, let's save. Now that it's saved, let's test this out. We can click here. Let's add a little bit of a fillet. And there you go. You could have a nice heart. But you know what? This is still kind of flat to me. I'm not happy with just adding a fillet in. But I'll show you one of my favorite tricks to make this look really, really nice. What I want to do is let's click on a side view. So click on right. What I want to do here now is give it a little bit of a bump like this way and I'll do it on the front as well. So it'll be like this really nice curved surface all the way throughout. So to do this, I'm going to create a new sketch on this forward facing plane right here. So you can click on it here. Okay. So now what I want to do is go to my arch here and go end points and rim point. So in here, I wanna click point number one, point number two, and then you know what? I kinda of wanna take it, cause I don't wanna have it over exaggerated, so I'll click here. Now, if you wanted to make this easier on yourself, you could click here first and see this all the way around. I really like that, I like that angle, but if I you wanted to change it, move this up a little bit and then you'd have to go down here and find this middle point and move this down the farther down you move it the less of an arc you're going to get or of course you could always redraw it to make it the angle you like so i'm happy with this angle so i'm going to leave that and i'm going to close this is kind of where it gets a little tricky so i'm going to click up here to go to isometric view and i am going to hide my mirrored for now because i want all distractions gone and I'm gonna zoom in pretty far in because the trick is I want to select just this endpoint here I can now see that it is selected green and believe me that's one of the trickiest parts next I'm gonna select a datum plane so I'm gonna create a datum plane right here and the datum plane is gonna have several options at this point you can zoom out just to make your life easier. And under reference number two, I wanna select this line right here. It goes yellow, so I'm selected. Under these options, select normal to edge. And then you'll notice what it basically does is it makes it perpendicular to the end, almost like it's forward facing. And that's exactly what we want. So just click okay. And I'm gonna go to datum plane and I am gonna make a sketch. So check this out. See our center right here? Well, that center point is now the end point of this line. And that's awesome to know because it's gonna help us out a lot. So click here just to get a nice view, forward looking view. And let's bring back our mirrored here. So click here, hit space. And now I can kind of see my heart. And the reason I want to see this heart, because I need to know the extremes of my arc that I'm about to create, just like last time. So I'm going to click up here, create arc. And I'll start it, let's say here. I'll end it, let's say here. And of course, I want to make a very fine arc. So like last time, I could have clicked it here just to see what I'm doing. So. There you go. I like this arc right here. Now, here's the important tidbit. I need to make this point 
or it's preferred if I make this point lined up with this center point right here because I want this to be my center of my cuts. So I can do that, of course, by creating a tangent constraint. Click here, click on this guy here, click on that guy up there, and there you go. There is my tangent. And of course, if you look at it, if you exit this, so go here, we'll go close, you can kind of see that shape, see? Right there, that guy and that guy are joined up. So let's go edit this guy. So right here, edit sketch. I'll go back here to model and hide this mirror again. Space bar will do it. And now I need to create like a box right here that's bigger than my heart. So I'm just gonna click on my line tool, click on the end and you'll know when you're at the end because you, of course you'll see your create coincident pop up right beside your cursor, right, 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 right there. Go up slightly and you know what? You don't even have to have it straight. Just go at an angle. Same thing on the other side, go up and you can just join these guys together. You gotta make sure they're joined up or this won't work. You need a solid shape. So once you're done that, just go to close to exit your sketch. And what we wanna do is create a sweeping curve. So just to demonstrate that, let's click on mirror, hit spacebar to see our heart. And what we wanna use is this guy right here, sweeping cut. Click on your sketch that you wanna sweep. Click on uh, sweeping cut. And now it's gonna ask you your path that you wanna take. So click on the object right here and click on just this little point that you can see at the end and you'll see a demo of where it's gonna sweep. There you go, and that looks good. That's gonna put a really nice bevel on things. So I'm gonna click okay. And let's hide the datum plane here. We don't need it anymore. And look at that. I think that looks a lot more organic and a lot more beautiful. And of course, let's just give it a quick save right here. And if you're so inclined, you can click on the surface here. Of course, add a fill it in, just like last time. But because of that organic shape, this is looking a lot better. You can click on isometric just to admire your work. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Like always, whatever you can do to help me win against this algorithm that's kicking my ass every weekend, it would be appreciated. Leave a like, leave a comment, scotch scribe, trick your friends into subscribing, whatever you can do, it would be greatly appreciated and I'd love you forever. Next week, we're gonna be taking the same model, so I hope you guys follow it along, and we're gonna be converting it into a puzzle, just like this guy. So, I hope to see you here next week, and like always, I hope you scotch scribe and nazdrowie.